We're gonna cover seven bug out kit or get home bag mistakes I see on a lot of YouTube channels. And I'm gonna actually, some of these are gonna be reinforcing what you may see on these other channels. But number two, I haven't seen a single bug out kit or bug out bag or get home bag include this. And I've been on a campaign since this channel started uh, to get this included because it's just such a no brainer when I explain it, you're gonna be like, yeah, that makes sense or hopefully so. Uh, I've, so who, who is Steve Poplar and how can he talk about bug out bags or get home bags? What uh, extreme training has he done? Um, I did walk across the United States. I, I've, I've backpacked the entire Appalachian Trail, which is just over 2000 miles uh, from Georgia all the way up to Maine. Um, so I have walked a little bit. I've done a lot of backpacking and uh, I'll tell you this, uh, I've learned some things from that that kind of grounds me in reality a little bit more than, than, than some of these other kits and stuff like that. And some of this is just uh, stuff I've kind of come up with along the way um, and I haven't really heard elsewhere. But uh, let's, let's jump into some of these things. Uh, our newsletter that just came out at noon, we have a newsletter that comes out weekly that has like tips and tricks and um, some, shares some of the information you guys uh, send in uh, on, on, the, on the updates and stuff like that. Uh, you, you sometimes have like uh, hacks or, or tips for uh, uh, putting up food and that kind of thing. And so we include some of those. Uh, but noon, uh, every Saturday comes out a, a newsletter. You can sign up for that newsletter if you just go down into the description down below. Okay, so the number one thing uh, that out there that seems to be a problem, and this isn't with all the kits, but, um, um, and some of the kits make clear what you should do with this, but uh, if, it's like freeze dried food. Uh, this is actually nutrient survival. I don't have all that much freeze dried food. Um, they, they approached me a while back about a sponsorship um, and, I, and I told them no, because I thought their food was a little overpriced and I thought their food kind of tasted nasty. So uh, I didn't want to promote them, but they did have, they did send me that little kit to kind of look at. But uh, this is a lot better than some of the other ones out there. Uh, some of the kits that people are putting in their, uh, food kits are putting in their bug out bags um, require to be cooked. This, this requires boiling water to be poured uh, and, and soaked in boiling water. Now, how, how are you supposed to soak this? So you need a bowl, you need a cook kit in order to boil the water to pour in the bowl, um, and then you need like a utensil to eat and everything like that. Friends, the, the purpose of the get home bag is to get home. And uh, people are like, well, you know, a hot meal will raise your spirits. Like, yeah, well, suck it up, buttercup, just get home, right? Like camping under a bridge and building a fire and, and using your ferro rods to, to cook some food. Like, seriously? No, you, you, you don't need that. Um, now, this is actually a, a brand, Whole Cows. Uh, they, they produce um, um, big chunks of beef, freeze-dried beef, um, and these guys, I actually have a review coming out uh, uh, in the next, uh, next week here uh, about their stuff. And it's actually really good stuff. Um, if you've ever gotten like the can of, 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 of freeze dried beef or chicken or whatever, it's all those little tiny crumbles. And, and a lot of it's just like this powdery dust. It's uh, stupid. Uh, but uh, if you want like actual chunks of beef, whole cows uh, freeze dries them big pieces. Uh, that way you can rehydrate them and you feel like you're actually like eating steak. Uh, the taste is there. Uh, the, this, is, this is good stuff. You're gonna wanna check out the, uh, the review. Uh, there's a link down below. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm giving this a thumbs up by the way. But um, that's, a, that's better. Um, last night I actually ate a piece of this uh, without rehydrating it. And let's just say it wasn't the best experience in the world. It tasted like steak and, you know, tasted good, but the, the texture was all, I, I recommend rehydrating it. But stuff like this is better. But ultimately what you really need is stuff like this. This is basically like sugar cookies. Um, this is a 36 hour kit. Um, they put these things on lifeboats. So they can handle the heat. So if it's sitting in your car, uh, this can handle the heat. And in addition to that, it's carbohydrates. Uh, if you're eating on the way home uh, or on a bug out uh, trip and stuff like that, you don't have time to cook. When I was on the Appalachian Trail, uh, you, you spent very little time cooking. Like you wake up when it was dawn and you just like, I, I, I'd like 
throw my bag on, you know, pack up all my stuff, throw it, all the stuff into my bag, and I'd eat like a, a granola bar as I started walking. You know, like you, you, at dawn, you just start walking and just walk all day long. Um, I'd stop maybe 15 minutes or maybe uh, two 15-minute breaks uh, any longer than 15 minutes and your body just starts hurting a lot. So you just need to keep going. You got the endorphins uh, telling you your body's fine. Uh, you need to, to push through the pain like that. So what you need is stuff that you can just pull out of your bag and just snack on as you're walking, keep your blood sugar up. Um, and you don't, you don't need protein. You don't need a, a four course meal and you don't need a stupid fire. Uh, that was one of the things on the Appalachian Trail. Uh, I don't know if I actually ever lit a fire um, my whole trip. Now, I had, had stoves to kind of boil some water to cook, but I never, like, started a fire. I sat around some fires that other people had started, but it was just like I never had the time to build a fire, and I was there to walk. I walked a lot, and if you're getting home uh, in a disaster situation, EMP has knocked out everybody's cars, uh, you just need to get home. You don't need to. You don't need to be doing any other stuff. You don't. It's not a camping trip. Just get home. Now, if you're a bug out bag, uh, you might want to have a fire kit. But generally speaking, if you're going to somewhere, just just get there. And that leads us into number two. This is the one that that no channels on YouTube seem to have in their bug out bags or get home kits. And that is an alternate form of transportation. This is just a scooter. Uh, razor scooter. Uh, make sure you get, if you're an adult, make sure you get the adult one. Uh, but nobody has an alternate form of transportation in their get home kit. And that just boggles my mind. Like the whole point of the kit is to get you home. And an alternate form of transportation like the razor scooter, uh, you can travel twice as fast with that on road. Now, I know some of these kits are like, well, you're going to have to walk home. Why? We still have roads, don't we? And a scooter is going to get you over that road a lot faster. And if you can, if you can get a bicycle in the back of your car that you're hauling around everywhere you go, that's way better. Like you can travel like three or four times faster than walking on a bicycle. Like definitely take the bicycle. And that does take up a lot of space. The Razor scooter is really compact. Doesn't take up much room in my trunk. Um, I, I usually have like smaller cars and stuff like that. So. Um, I recommend uh, some sort of alternative transportation. If you're a, you know, if you're a rollerblader, then cool. Put some rollerblades in your car, uh, whatever. But uh, some people are like, you know, you're gonna be traveling over country. You're gonna have to like, you're, you're gonna have to stay off the roads. You're gonna have to. That's just dumb. I'm, I'm gonna say it. Uh, walking is dumb. Okay. If you have an opportunity to not walk, you're going to not walk because walking is dumb. And people are going to be like, well, it's moral and it's, it's righteous and, and, and it's honorable. It's bogus. It's stupid. I've walked 2,000 miles across the Appalachian Trail. The only reason we didn't uh, use an alternative form of transportation is because that was considered cheating. Okay. Um, the point was to walk up and over mountains. And I'll tell you this. Uh, I could have traveled those 2,000 miles uh, in half the time by doing a road walk. Walking up and down mountains is not the most efficient thing to do. Walking cross country, um, bushwhacking uh, takes about twice to three or four times as much energy as it takes to walk on a trail. It takes about twice as much energy to walk on a trail than it does to walk on pavement. Are you hearing me? These are the realities. You can travel um, about three miles an hour uh, or up to four miles an hour if you're really huffing it on, on pavement, but you can only travel one to two miles an hour on a trail and you can barely travel one mile an hour if you're bushwhacking. Uh, now, now there's some exceptions to that if you're out west and it's open country and you're up in the mountains and stuff like that, you can, you can, uh, it, you know, everything's like a trail because it's pretty wide open. Um, yeah, okay, but still, it's faster to walk on the road. And, and let's just be honest here, too. If the balloon goes up and everybody's on super, everyone's on edge, everyone's freaking out. You're going to walk through people's backyards? Like, put in your mind, like, your workplace or wherever you might be coming from to try to get home. And I want you to think through what is a path you could take 
in order to get home that's not on the roads. And explain to me how that's not climbing through like 30, 40, 50, 100 people's backyards. Uh, because if you try cutting through someone's backyard when everybody's on edge, uh, you're gonna get you're gonna get buried in a in a shallow hole in somebody's backyard. That's just what's gonna happen to you. Okay, um, they're, they're they're gonna be on edge. They're not gonna know if you're trying to invade their home or steal stuff from them. And so somebody's gonna pop you. Okay, that's just what's gonna happen. Uh, so you're gonna stay on the road. Why? Because you have to. There just isn't an alternative. Now you may use side roads as opposed to highways. Cool, wonderful, but if you're on pavement, you might as well be using a bike or a scooter or something like that. Um, you can travel twice as fast on a scooter than you can walk it, easily. And if you, if you kind of work at it, you can get up to three times faster. Uh, bicycles are even faster. Like, if you're talking about it taking 48 hours for you to walk home, okay, cut that down to 24 hours on a scooter, uh, a long day on a scooter is possible. A two full days on pavement walking is not really possible. Uh, that, that, that's just really, really rough. So this isn't a camping trip, so don't, don't take your ferro rods. Don't, you, you don't need to start a fire, okay? You don't need to cook your food. What you need to do is you need to have food that's going to get you home, and you need a transportation device that's going to get you home. And number three, um, don't be super ambitious. Like, if you haven't actually covered long distances in a day, you can't just extrapolate what, what your experiences have been. You're like, well, I can go three miles an hour on, on backcountry uh, gravel roads. Yeah, okay, well, pavement's different. Uh, if, if you talk to marathoners, um, if you talk to people who've done long road walks, it's not that you you can't physically um, have the oomph and muscle power to, uh, to continue traveling. It's your feet give out. Your feet hurt so, so bad that you have to stop. That's what happens on pavement, okay? So uh, it's faster to walk on pavement, but it beats your feet up really, really bad. So um, don't be super ambitious and extrapolating out like, oh, I can do 40, 50 miles walking in a day. No, you can't. Yeah, yeah, I can't. No, no, you can't. It's not possible. It, it, you can't do it. Now, the part of that ambitious thing is like, well, make sure you have shoes that are actually going to enable you to do this. If you're going to be looking at a long road walk, you're going to want to have different shoes than if you're going to walk up and over the country, okay? Boots, heavy boots with, with um, hard soles are not good for a road walk. What you need is spongy uh, shoes that are going to give you a lot of um, cushion as you're walking on the road. Uh, so uh, have realistic shoes, and also you need to actually set realistic uh, am ambitions with how much ground you're going to cover. Um, if you're semi out of shape or whatever, and you really just push yourself really hard, you can do about 20 miles, okay, on pavement. If you're relatively in shape, 25 miles is possible, um, but you're going to be just in a world of hurt. Your feet are going to hurt so, so bad if you're walking, okay? If you're in tip-top shape and you actually have, uh, you know, spend a lot of time actually pounding pavement with, uh, with running and stuff like that, you can maybe do, maybe do 30. On a scooter, 40 to up to 50 is, is quite reasonable in a day. And the fact is that you're putting a lot less pressure on your feet, so your feet aren't going to be the weak point. As long as you're getting some calories into you, uh, carbohydrate and sugar calories into you, uh, you can actually potentially just keep on going. Um, you can actually go a, a good bit further than that on a scooter. And on a bicycle, you can go, um, uh, you know, your backside on the, on the seat of the uh, bicycle is going to be one of the weak points there. Just being aware of what your weak points are uh, to your transportation method and make sure you've actually tried out your transportation methods because it doesn't go as well out there in the reality world as it does up in your head. And, and I, I mean that just, just be realistic about things. Now I've had to think a lot about this because I used to travel, uh, all the way to the other side of the city. And uh, I was looking at like, it's going to take me three days to walk home. You know, and that's kind of where I was like, well then, is there something I can put in the car that can get me home faster? 
And that's where I started thinking about the scooter and stuff like that. I was like, I really want to put a bicycle on there. But then that's where I came up with the scooter. I was like, well, you know, I mean, it's, it, it's a lot smaller than a bicycle. It's manageable, but it's not as good. Uh, number three, uh, and a lot of um, YouTubers do have this, but I want to reiterate this because uh, I think a lot of people kind of forget this in their, in their car kits. Water. You need water, okay? You, know, you don't need a life straw. You don't, need, you don't need a water filtration kit. What you need is water. Um, because especially for a get home bag, like just, you need just water. You don't need to be fiddling with trying to get water out of a stream next to the, the road and stuff like that. If you're in an urban area or if you're near pavement, um, you, you don't really want to drink the water next to the road anyway, because all the toxic chemicals that come off of the pavement and asphalt go down into the stream. It's not good stuff. And your water, your life straw will not filter out the chemicals that are in the water. Now, if you're going to do that, you, you're probably not that much worse just drinking it straight out of the stream. I mean, it's, but you, you don't want to be doing that. You want to have water in your bag, okay? Water in your car, water in your bag, just have it there. Please don't make that mistake, okay? Um, number five here, seasonal appropriate um, kit, okay? Uh, if it's winter, you need to have like winter stuff in there. It's going to be different than if you have summer stuff in there. And so you do need to change kind of what's in your get home bag or your bug out bag. You need to be prepared for the weather that you're going to experience. Now, one of the things that sometimes is surprising is summertime and, and on shoulder seasons, people can be surprised by how cold it can get at night. Uh, if you spend all night like in your house, you may not realize how cold it gets outside and how difficult that may be to endure outside. So make sure you have stuff to keep you warm. Um, that's just important. Uh, also with, with rain gear, uh, don't make that mistake uh, that, uh, you know, everyone wants to get rain gear. It's going to keep them dry. If you're walking, if you're moving in the rain, you're going to get wet. Uh, backpackers all know this, that like your rain kit is not made is not designed or should not be designed to keep you dry because that's just a lie, okay? You're gonna get wet, you're gonna get soaked. If it's perfectly weather resistant, you're still gonna soak yourself in your own sweat. So you're gonna get soaked anyway. The important thing is when it's raining that you get to stay warm. So make sure your rain gear is actually going to keep you warm, not that it's gonna keep you dry. So really just focus in on clothing that's gonna keep you warm even when it's soaking wet. Uh, so, uh, uh, you know, even those plastic ponchos and stuff like that, uh, they actually do keep you kind of warm. So that, that's, that's good stuff. Uh, it will get you soaked with your own sweat underneath of it, but that's fine because you're going to get soaked anyway. So just deal with it, uh, suck it up, and just keep moving forward. Uh, bug out bags, if you're planning on living out of your bag, um, th that's going to be a little bit different, but, uh, but still... Uh, a lot of these things still apply. If you're trying to cover ground, if you're trying to move uh, from point A to point B, uh, all these things kind of apply. Uh, number six, um, I kind of threw in the rain gear thing there, uh, but uh, adjustable. Make sure your kit's adjustable. Uh, don't, uh, don't just have a kit that's static, like one bag. Have like a bag, but then have like some other components that you can add onto your bag. Uh, extra water is a great one to have like next to the bag right? Have the bag with some water in it, but then have like extra water in your car. Have some uh, additional, you know, weather gear, right? If it's inclement weather and you want to take some extra weather gear, uh, that's stuff that doesn't take up all that much room in your car. So just have some extra uh, stuff in your car. Make sure that your kit is designed to get home uh, with all the people that you may have in your car, right? So if you have a kit, but you have like kids that are sometimes in your car, uh, make sure you have a kit that's appropriate for like getting all of you home. And, and just think about how far out you drive and be ready to expand your kit if you're going out a little further. Uh, just make sure you have some extra stuff that you're putting in there uh, if you're gonna be traveling like on a vacation or you're gonna be traveling further out than what you normally do. Uh, just have some extra stuff that you can throw in the car to kind of supplement your kit. So just think of it as like an adjustable kit not just a static kit. That's an important thing to be thinking about. 
Uh, and number seven here, uh, maps. Make sure you have paper maps. Uh, that keeps getting overlooked so much. Uh, I know a lot of uh, other channels uh, talk about that on their thing, but you can't overestimate how important it is to have paper maps and know how to use them, right? Not just, um, and in, in a disaster situation, in a crisis situation, when there's unrest and everything like that, one of the first things people do is they rip all of the street signs down. So be aware of that too. Uh, you may not be able to look up the street name uh, because uh, people may take down the street signs. Uh, to make it harder for people to navigate. That happens uh, in civil conflicts, um, civil wars, stuff like that. It happens in rioting situations, all that jazz. Uh, be aware that you may not be able to look up street names and you're going to have to work a little harder with your map, so to speak. All right, so those are my thoughts. Um, if you guys have some additional thoughts or some critiques or maybe you just outright disagree with some of the stuff I've said here on this channel, um, then uh, pop it down in the comments down below. This is what we're here for, to have a conversation and discuss. Uh, what do you guys think about an alternate form of transportation? Are there other alternate forms of transportation that would fit better in your car that are a better idea? Um, you know, this is the best I've come up with, but uh, let's see what you guys have to think about that. All right, folks, thanks so much for watching. Steve Poplar of The Poplar Report, out.